Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Just got a huge stack on this uh, IRS business. By the way, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but there's an NFL player, offensive lineman Evan Mathis, and he posted a photo of himself on on Instagram, <laughs> and uh, he is um, committing an act of nature on an internal revenue service building, uh, um, I don't know what you'd call it, an obelisk or something like that. It identifies this place as a IRS b- building, and the tag on his uh, photo is audit this. So that uh, is what's going on out there. Uh, you, just a stack of stuff I've got on this IRS business is just, uh, I mean, it, it's just completely out of control, and I want to get through get to some of that stuff. But first of all, let's go back to some Eric Holder clips uh, because remember, the Department of Justice, they're the ones that were trampling on the media and their First Amendment rights. When we look at Benghazi, that's the State Department. That's uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, so you've got the DOJ. That's this media uh, business. And what's the other scandal? I'm missing one. What's the other one? Oh, the IRS. Yeah, that, that's Treasury Department, the IRS, and all this harassment of conservative groups. Now, so the question with Holder says, look, I recused myself. I, I don't know when I did it. We don't have any paperwork. I don't remember when I did that. I handed it off to somebody. I don't even know who I handed it off to. And it was somebody else, I don't even know who it was, that signed this subpoena for these phone records. But I don't know who it is. And this is despite the fact that Holder said earlier this is one of the three worst breaches of natural, national security I've ever seen in my, in my life as a, as a career lawyer in government. I've never seen, I've only seen two worst cases of breaches of national security. But no, I didn't sign the subpoena for those records. I don't know who did. I delegated that to somebody. I can't remember when I did it. I can't remember who I delegated that to. So here's Representative Sensenbrenner from Wisconsin Clip 3 trying to get at the bottom of this with Eric Holder yesterday in the House Judiciary Committee hearing. Let's listen. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm trying to find out who authorized the subpoena. You can't tell me if Deputy Attorney General Cole authorized the subpoena. Somebody had to authorize the subpoena because the, uh, the Code of Federal Regulations is pretty specific that this is supposed to go as close to the top as possible. No, I, I, I'm, what I'm saying is that I can't say as a matter of fact, but I have to assume, and I'd say I would probably be 95, 99 percent certain that the deputy attorney general acting in my stead uh, was the one who authorized the subpoena. This is amazing to me. I mean, did you hear what he had to say? Eric Coulter said, I have to assume what went on in my own office. Here, I'm talking about the third worst breach of national security information, the third worst leak in history of mankind, and I have to assume how my office handled it. I don't know. I, I'm I like I'm 95, 99. Well, why don't you go ask him, Eric? Why don't you ask him before the hearing? Did were you the one that authorized? I mean, obviously, to me, he's he, he is he's just deliberately. I'm trying to be as polite as possible. He's just deliberately trying to conceal and obfuscate and. And cover his own fanny here because none of this makes any sense. Now, Trent Franks, this is uh, audio clip uh, A9. And uh, Trent Franks yesterday in this House Judiciary Committee, Trent Franks, who's one of the really good guys, he's a congressman from Arizona, he asked Eric Colder about the Born Alive Protection Act. Now, this is an act that requires that a newborn baby receive medical attention, uh, that, that a, a baby who's born after surviving an abortion attempt receive medical attention. It's passed in the wake of what was happening in Chicago where babies were born alive after surviving an abortion attempt and they were discarded, left to die in the corner of the hospital laundry room. And when word got out on this, efforts were made to deal with it. Remember Barack Obama, he believes in infanticide. Barack Obama, your president, believes in infanticide. He believes that if babies weren't killed in the womb, they ought to be killed as soon as they're born. Newborns, they're infants, they're babies, they're completely separated from their bodies of their mothers. They are American citizens. Barack Obama, your president, believes they ought to be thrown into a corner of a laundry room and allowed to die. That is, that's what President Obama believes. So anyway, at the federal level, in the wake of all of this, a law was passed that you, you've got to give a baby who's born alive, 
Even though you tried to abort it, if it manages to survive and is born alive, you have to give it medical attention. Now, my best estimates, and, and Trent Franks mentions that in this soundbite, there are probably 18,000 babies after this law was passed that survived abortion attempts. The abortionist tried to kill them in the womb, didn't succeed. The baby was born alive. So we have 18,000 as a minimum. That's a conservative estimate. And remember, you know, Gosnell deli- uh, aborted maybe 40,000 babies. We got this scandal down in Texas. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Another abortionist doing a Gosnell thing. The uh, same deal. You know, so who knows how many of those 40,000 babies that Gosnell aborted were born alive uh, because it was standard kind of practice to induce labor and delivery. It's just easier to kill them when they're out of the womb. You don't have to pull their arms and legs and heads off if they're out of the womb. So um, we have no idea. I mean, that 18,000 figure has got to be a conservative figure. So Trent Franks asks Eric Holder uh, about this and about the enforcement of the Born Alive Protection Act 18,000 violations, 18,000 babies killed after they were born alive. How many prosecutions have taken place under your watch? Let's listen. Have you ever enforced this law even one time? Uh, I don't know what I would. I mean, will you get back to us on that? Have you ever enforced the Born Alive Infant Protection Act even one time? We can examine that and see whether the U.S. attorneys um, throughout since the law was passed, uh, you said in 2002? Yes. How, what the, uh, how many prosecutions there have been under that law? Um, well, there's been 18,000 opportunities a year since then approximately, so I'm just wondering if you've even, even enforced it once. I don't know uh, whether there was enforcement during the Bush administration or the Obama administration since the passage of the law in 2002. I just don't know what the statistics okay. are. <laughs> I mean, you know, this guy is absolutely clueless about the basic functions of his office. Now, let's grab clip number four, Rob. This is just a montage. This is a montage of Eric Holder's answers yesterday in the House Judiciary Committee. Remember, this guy is the chief law enforcement officer in the country. This is the guy that was responsible ultimately for the First Amendment rights of the Associated Press and who knows how many other media organizations being violated and trampled. This is Eric Holder. This is the guy that's in charge of prosecuting offenses against federal law. Here's a montage of his answers in yesterday's House Judiciary Committee hearing. This is both an ongoing matter and an ongoing matter about which I know nothing. Uh, I do not know. I, I don't know what has happened in this matter. I did not know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So I don't know. I don't know. I assume he was, but I don't know. And I don't know. I don't know what you are going to ask. Me. I did not know. I, I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know what happened. That I don't know. I don't know why that didn't happen. But I simply don't have uh, a factual basis to answer that question. I don't know. Good question. And I'm not sure what the answer is. Don't remember that, no. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't remember when that happened. I'm not even sure I remember. And I'm just not sure. I'm not sure exactly when that happened. I, I think we're going to have to get into the investigation before I can answer that question more intelligently. Uh, that I'm not sure. I just don't know. Do you know that? Um, I'm not aware that I'm not sure about that. I have no no knowledge that that has ever occurred. I simply don't know. I don't know. I, I just don't know when when exactly all these events happened. You know, I'm not sure exactly know. certain. I just don't know. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look. I don't know. I was recused recused myself. I recused myself. What day did you recuse yourself? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know exactly when. I'm not sure. Nothing immediately comes to my mind. I'm not aware of of that. I just don't know what the statistics okay. are. Uh, I, I'm unaware. I don't know what happened. I don't know exactly. What, I don't know the specific questions. I know. Well, either you know or you don't know. You cannot know what I know. That's all. <laughs> oh, man. You know, Rob uh, Gardner, my director, saying, you know, you, 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 that clip starts and you start laughing because it's hilarious. And then it's kind of sobers you. I mean, what do you call somebody who says, I don't know? When somebody doesn't know something, what are they? They are ignorant. So you heard Eric Calder over and over and over and over again admit to the American people that he is an ignorant attorney general. He is clueless. He doesn't know what's going on in his department. He doesn't know what's going on by his subordinates. He has no idea. 
So I would say the minimum, we need to find an attorney general that knows something about anything because this guy doesn't know anything about anything. Now, uh, John Stewart, this is audio clip A7. The number to call if you want to join the program, 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. Here is John uh, Stewart from his program the other night, and he's talking about here, and he's, now John Stewart is turning on Barack Obama. So you got John Stewart, hardcore leftist comedian, turning on Barack Obama, and he's mocking Obama for talking about Obama's continually saying, hey, I found that out by watching the news just like you did. This is how the clip went. I heard on the news about this story that uh, Fast and Furious. It was something uh, we found out about uh, along with all of you. We don't have any independent knowledge of that. He found out about the news reports uh, yesterday on the road. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if President Obama learned Osama bin Laden had been killed when he saw himself announcing it on television. <laughs> So that's John Stewart. 888-589-8840 is uh, the, the number to call. You know, and Rob, we might want to keep that, uh, that number four, that Eric Colder clip. We may have occasion to use that again uh, as the, uh, the, the program uh, develops. So we'll have some more clips coming up for you the next segment or the next hour. 888-589-8840. By the way, just uh, looking ahead in the program, at the bottom of the next hour, we're going to have Tom Wallace on. Tom Wallace is the founder of a ministry that deals with the issue of uh, Islam. Uh, it's called Fortress of Faith, and he's been following pretty closely the SEAL Team 6 uh, helicopter crash in Afghanistan. And he'll be on with us at the bottom of the next hour to talk us through that and what the concerns are uh, with that whole deal. You know, Byron York has got a piece today about how this IRS scandal raises fears about enforcing Obamacare. We've talked about this before, but don't forget, Obamacare requires the hiring of 16,000 additional IRS agents. And you are going to be required, every one of us, next January 1 with our tax returns, to furnish personal, private, medical and health information to the IRS. Back in two, Focal Point AFR Talk. 